Hi! When I filmed most of this video, I did it back in my studio on the east coast of Canada, and I forgot to mention one very important thing. Uh, most of the information in this video is very dependent on understanding the left and right uh, stereo field. So, I highly recommend that if you do watch this video, do it with headphones on or with good speakers to your left and right so you really understand what's happening. You're not going to really get a good sense of what's going on if you're listening on a laptop or on a mobile phone. Okay, here we go. Hello, my name is Jonathan Clark. I'm also known as DJ Bolivia and uh, this is going to be another video teaching um, people a little bit more about DJing. Now I've done a couple videos already about mixers and uh, stuff like that and in them I kind of touched on cueing and if you don't know what cueing is, if you're brand new to DJing, um, it's the process that lets you hear something on a piece of your equipment without the crowd hearing it. Okay, so if you have two CD players, the signal from one CD player can go out to the audience on the dance floor, they'll hear that, but it's possible if you have a set of headphones and the right mixer, and you have it set up correctly, that you can play a song on the second CD player, and you can make that sound come through your headphones, and the crowd doesn't hear it, and that lets you do um, line up, uh, line tracks up, you know, preview tracks, two beat mixing, stuff like that. So, cueing is done a little bit differently on just about every type of mixer. I mean, there's some general broad concepts, but you will find that if you move from piece of, from one piece of equipment to another, um, there's often some subtle changes or some not so subtle changes. And usually if you pick one manufacturer, like say you were to go to Pioneer and you were to try a bunch of their different mixers, then the queuing is probably gonna be the same from mixer to mixer most of the time. Um, but if you go to another type of mixer, say an Allen and Heath, the way that the queuing works might be completely different. So obviously in a video like this, it's impossible for me to test every mixer out there. So I'm gonna do a very limited scope video here. I'm gonna use two of the most common brands. Uh, I'm gonna use Allen and, Allen and Heath, and I'm gonna use Pioneer. Both of them are very well known and uh, respected within the industry. And so I'm gonna use just a simple example mixer from each one. Um, for the Allen and Heath, I'm going to use the Zone 62, although most other uh, Allen and Heath mixers are pretty similar. I've got a Zone 4D mixer overall uh, video. I'll put a link here right now. So if you want to watch that, you might see a little bit about the queuing in that video. But we'll use the Zone 62 today. And for Pioneer, uh, we will represent Pioneer with the DJM 600, okay? So that one was an industry standard for many years. Now, I'm a little nervous with this video that it will not go completely as planned because this is one of the more complex technical setups that I have attempted. And I could, I suppose, looking at this in retrospect, I could have set up the system with just the Allen and Heath mixer, gone through that entirely, and then taken the Allen and Heath out and done the same thing again with the Pioneer and gone through that entirely. But I wanted to make this more complicated for myself. So what I've done is I've set it up and you can see right now, I've got a left CD player, a right CD player, the Allen and Heath Zone 62 and the, <coughs> the Pioneer DJM 600 side by side. Now, the reason why this is so complicated is because I have both CD players being routed through both mixers simultaneously, and then the signals from the two mixers are going out to a third mixer, to my Zone 4D, and then to my booth monitor from the Zone 4D. So this is pretty complicated. Let me, you know, just so he's got a kind of background on what I had to do to make this work, because if you're a DJ, the more you know about audio routing, the better. So basically this left CD player comes out of the CD as RCA and it goes into two splitters. And then from the splitters, I have one cord that is running to channel three on my Allen and Heath. I have one cord running to channel three on my Pioneer. Then, same thing on the other side, the right CD player has a cord, an RCA cord coming out of the mixer 
and then it goes to two splitters, one to split the right side of the stereo signal, one to split the left side of the stereo signal. And then uh, I've got my, I've got one RCA coming from the two splitters going into channel four on the, L, on the zone 62. And then the other RCA cord comes one half from each splitter and goes into channel four of my Pioneer TJM 600. Okay. So now you can see that channels three and four on both mixers are left and right. Now, the two master outputs, main outs, from the two mixers, they are both going over here to my zone 4D. And so my left mixer, the zone 62, is on channel three. And the right mixer, the DJM 600, is on channel 4. And then the output from the zone 4D goes to the booth monitor. Okay, so it's pretty complicated, certainly. Um, but it does mean if I play a track, you can hear it on channel 3 of that mixer or on channel 3 of that mixer. Now, um, one more thing I've got happening, because I wanted to be able to use the microphone to synchronize my multiple tapes and stuff. You know, when I'm doing this editing, the video editing, it's a little complicated for me because I'm not a professional. Um, so I'm gonna sync, I'm gonna say something into the mic to synchronize everything. And the mic, I did not put on the Pioneer, which has this nice uh, mic plug easy access and everything because when you use the mic on the Pioneer it goes the signal goes in and then it goes through your volume attenuation knob and it goes through your EQ buttons and then it goes directly to the master out but it does not pass through the channel fader on the master out which means that if I spoke into well, I'll just do a quick demonstration Test, 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 test. Okay, so you can see that it, the signal level is visible there and you can hear it, but I cannot route this signal through my cue into my little recorder. So see if I press cueing on this one, that cue signal, if it was on any other channel, would pass through to my record, audio recorder, but it doesn't on this one. So we'll take this out. We'll make sure we plug it into the correct, and then we will try testing. Check, 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 check. Okay, so this is what I can use to line up my uh, audio feed with my video feeds, because right now I've got Q turned on, and it is feeding through out this cord into my audio recorder. Okay, so what I've done with the audio recorder is it's running permanently, and from my headphone jack, I took a simple tip ring sleeve plug, which is a stereo plug, you can tell by the two bands, it's quarter inch, uh, or in metric, that's 6.35 millimeters, and because my little audio recorder has a smaller one eighth, I don't know if you can see that, a one eighth inch input, I didn't have a cord that would go from this to 1 8 so what I did was took an adapter, so the back end of this quarter inch plug is a female 1 8 plug, so I can plug a cord in like that. The other end goes into my audio recorder with another male 8 inch or 3.5 millimeter, and then as I'm doing the video I can flip back and forth and have my headphones feed which is how I would hear the cueing, going through the audio recorder, which not only lets me record it, but the nice thing is I can see the volume meters on the audio recorder while I'm doing everything. Okay, and then I've got my headphones, because the whole point is cueing in headphones. I've got the headphone feed coming out of the audio recorder, so I can still hear what's going on as if my headphones were plugged directly into either one of the mixers. Now, one thing that I would like to do, I'm just gonna show you something neat here. 
Listen to this. This is the uh, music playing at full speed, at full volume. Okay, that's on the Ellen and Heath. That's on the Pioneer. And you've got to think that both of these two feeds are going into two separate channels on my Zone 4D at the same time. So if I turn one of them up all the way, and it's fairly loud, and I add the signal from the second mixer, and it's also going to be going through another channel at the same time, you'd think that the volumes are going to combine and make it even louder, correct? Watch what happens. The complete opposite of what you'd expect. It actually gets quieter. And the reason for that is because this is a phenomena known as phase cancellation. So what's happening when, for some reason, the waves basically, because the, the things are lined up almost perfectly, um, but their, polar their, their phase is inverted, is reversed. So what's happening is that you're getting partial cancellation of the volumes between the two tracks. And the only reason that that's not completely cancelling out, I suspect, is because somewhere in this system, in one of these two mixers, there's a tiny bit of latency difference. So any signal that passes through electrical equipment is going to get slowed down a tiny bit in the process of going through that equipment because of the resistance of different electrical components. So I guess both of these mixers obviously must have a tiny bit of latency but one of them must not have exactly the same amount of latency as the other. So instead of both signals passing through perfectly synchronized, they're off by just a tiny smidgen. And so that's why we're not getting complete phase cancellation of the two different tracks. Okay, so that's what we've got happening. Um, because of copyright issues, I'm using two of my own, uh, two tracks that I own the copyright to. So both are different remixes of a track of mine called Global Underground. The one on the left side is the Pitched Senses Instrumental. The one on the right side is DJ Nard's Instrumental Remix. So if by some reason you want to download either of these, you can do a Google search. I've got them on SoundCloud. It's a free download. Help yourself. Okay, so now that I've given you the background on how this stuff is all set up, uh, first thing I'm going to do before we get into the queuing part is I'm going to quickly line up the speeds of these two tracks so we have um, so they're synchronized. And so you can watch what I'm doing. I'm going to be queuing off this mixer, playing through this mixer because the headphones are plugged into here. I think that's going to be good enough for our purposes. So the other thing that I've had to do is I've had to be really careful with the volumes here. Um, this is a gain staging nightmare. Basically I have, uh, in the course of setting this all up, I did some testing. So I've got my gains on these two channels right at the center, which kind of makes sense. Uh, I have the headphone output very, very low on this mixer because it doesn't need very much signal to go into uh, the audio recorder to make sure that we get a clear sound. If I put it up a tiny bit more, it actually distorts on the audio recorder, even though I've got the record setting at a very low level also. And it's just because it's the wrong signal strength to be feeding into the, uh, the line in on the audio recorder. And so over on the Pioneer mixer, um, the trim knobs have to be over here quite a bit, off to uh, about 10 o'clock on a clock face. 
and again the uh, the signal level has to be quite low in the headphone output to make sure I don't distort in this uh, in this one. So let's figure out what we need to understand about cueing between the two different mixers. Okay, the first one we'll go we'll start on the left, and so if I press play on this track, you can see some signal level in this channel. Okay. Plug in. Okay, so with the pot, with the Allen and Heath, right now I don't have any of the Q buttons pushed in, and I am getting signal coming through my headphones. Okay, and I'm overlaying. When I do the editing here, I'm going to overlay the audio file from my audio recorder into the YouTube video. Hopefully. For you, the viewer, uh, because I've got three different sources, so I can't just use left and right to balance things. I need left and right to understand how the cueing works. And so for you to hear the master at the same time is gonna be really confusing. But I think because you're gonna get a hopefully clean signal coming through because of the audio recorder file, the fact that our master in the room is gonna be coming through the video cameras instead and I'll actually have them both running at once. So we'll get a tiny bit of um, phase cancellation uh, between the two cameras. So it'll sound like the room monitor is kind of off to one side and a little bit chorusy. So hopefully you can tell that the master of what we're hearing in the room will sound different from the master of what is coming through the headphones. Anyway, back to the mixer, zone 62. Okay, so I don't have Q turned on on any channel, and yet I'm getting, I'm definitely getting the master output coming through the headphones anyway. Now, if I turn Q on, well, let's not use Q on the same channel because that really would get confusing. Let's start the other track. Okay, so hopefully these are in sync. So I'm going to turn Q on in this channel. Okay, so right now, I am still hearing, I'm still hearing the program, the master out from this channel coming through in both earphones. Although the program, the master out, is coming through the headphones when nothing is turned on for cueing, if I actually press Q on a different channel, it's turning off the master output to this. So all that's coming through the headphones is just the cues that you put on. Now if I were to press Q on two channels, then I get them both at the same time. Okay? Now, why is this important? Well, it means that you've kind of got, a lot of people when they're trying to cue, they want to be able to hear the incoming track better. It's just natural, that's the way DJs think. And also, you've got to remember that the beginning of a song, which is what you're bringing in usually when you're mixing, is usually quieter than the energy levels later in the song. So you kind of want that volume up a little bit anyway. So that's why Ellen and Heath has it set up so that normally the master out comes through at a moderate level, but when you press Q, it kicks in at a lot, or, lot louder level in your headphones. Now, this setup right now, I have the split Q button up so it's not engaged. So let's see what happens when I push the split Q button down. Okay, so first we'll try turning up the, putting some signal through the master channel. Okay, so I'm still getting, actually let's start that track again. 
So I'm still getting the master signal coming through both headphones. Now let's see what happens when I press. Uh, let's see what happens when I press Q now. Okay, so now the difference is the master output is still coming through this time when split Q is engaged, but the master only comes through the right side. Okay, and on the left side. The new track again louder. Yeah. Okay, so to summarize, split cue turned off, then normally your master signal is always coming through both headphones at a moderate level, and then when you press Q on something, it comes through the headphones at a louder level in both sides. Split cue. If nothing is turned on, you're going to get a moderate level of your master love, master signal at all times. But if you turn Q on, it kills that master signal in your left side, keeps it on in your right, and replaces the left side with a louder version of the track that you're cueing. Okay, so that's how the Allen and Heath works it. Now let's remove, and we will switch over to the Pioneer. And the Pioneer does things um, fairly differently, okay? So on the Pioneer, we can still cue any individual channel, but we can also put the cue on the master or on the effects and sampler. And for the headphones, not only can we control the volume, which I'm not gonna do right now because it's feeding into my recorder, but we can also go between a mono split and a stereo signal and between my mix ratio can go from 100% Q to 50-50 to 100% master. Okay, so let's start off by turning this song on. Now, do we hear anything in the headphones now? No, because unlike the Allen and Heath, if nothing is turned on for Q, then nothing comes through the headphones. Okay, Alan and Heath didn't have that special Q button on the master channel, so that's why it kind of, they've defaulted so it always comes through when you're not doing other stuff, because that's the only way you can hear it. But with Pioneer, you can have total silence. And that's kind of nice sometimes when you're DJing and you're getting tired of the noise for a while and you've got like one or two minutes you want to let your ears rest, you can actually put your headphones on with nothing coming through them, just to give your ears a quick break. Anyway, if I want to hear the master through them, ah, nothing's happening yet. And that's because I have it on 100% Q. I start moving this knob, of Q and Master. There's 100% Master. And right now I can hear my signal in both sides of the headphones in stereo. Now, you'd think, since this is lit up as being cued right now, you'd think it should show up on when I'm set on the Q side. It doesn't, that's kind of odd, eh? Okay, let's try cueing a different channel. Let's try cueing channel 4. Okay. So right now, channel 4, can I hear it in both ears? Yes, I can. Now if I switch over to master, it goes away. You would think that you would hear the output of the master channel, but I'm hearing nothing. So let's see what happens when we press Q on it. Okay. So basically, what's happening here is that in order for you to hear 
um, both sides, the Q channel and the master at the same time, and to be able to use this knob to flip back and forth, you actually want to light up both of these. Sorry. Okay, so I'm going to light up the master and I've got the uh, channel lit up, so So when the knob's set to Q, I'm hearing what's cueing. When it's set to master, I hear what's playing through the bubble. With no master lit up, all I'm hearing is the cue side of things. Or with no cue lit up, all I can hear is the master side of things. And in both of these cases, you'll notice that the signal's coming through on both sides of the headphones. Okay, so let's try, um, we have the split cue on the Allen and Heath. Let's see what happens when we go mono split on this one. Okay, it's kind of displaying the same behavior. When I'm left to Q side, nothing's coming through. When I'm right to master, the signal's coming through. But, instead of both sides of the headphones, it's only coming through the right-hand side. Let's try the Q. Okay, same behavior. Q only comes through when you're on the Q setting. When you're on the master setting, there's no cue coming through. So in order to hear both in your headphones at the same time, you have to turn both on. And in that case, you can go from cue to master, to cue to master. Okay, so why the differences? Well, the reason is because that, that's basically, if someone's mixing in headphones on a Pioneer, basically they leave the master on and they choose one of the two channels. Whichever track is not playing, which is just, which, which is not playing and is about to come in, you'll set the cue on that channel, and then you can flip back and forth, or you can balance the middle to hear cueing in your, in, well, this is the tricky thing. When it's on stereo, your cue comes through both ears when you're on the cue side, and your master comes through both ears when you're on the master side with mono, sorry, that's if that stereo switch was set that way. With mono split, it's the same sort of thing. You only when you're on the cue side, but only in the left ear, and master only right side, only in your right ear. Okay, that's really confusing, eh? Until you uh, play around with it a lot. So, I think the Pioneer is almost a little bit more confusing because of the different uh, complexity of things. Now, the thing is, with, with Pioneers, when I learned to cue, what I did was I learned with my left headphone on, and I would always leave this switch, this knob set over to cue, when I wanted to hear the master, I would listen with my ear off my, uh, my headphone can off my ear so that I was hearing the booth monitor. And, you know, that's just naturally the way I learned to get. And I would clarify, it's important to know which way your headphones go. So for me, the cord is on the left side. So don't put them on this way sometimes and this way sometimes. Figure out which ear is your left ear and make sure it's always in your left ear. Okay? So for me, using a booth monitor, I never used two monitors at once. If there are two monitors in the booth, I would turn off the one to my left because that's my cue ear and I would only use the one on the right side. The drawback, of course, is that if there was no monitor in the booth on the right side, if it's only on the left side, then what, well, the easy thing would be to move the monitor to my right side, but if I couldn't do that, it was a little awkward because I couldn't just switch ears, do it this way, because I'm 
so used, I'm so used to the cue, the incoming track being from up here. And so the only way I could ever learn to do it that way was I would turn these tapes along with what I was mixing, so that I put them down the so the master, you know, the dance floor over between my right ear still, like it would be a sponsor here to be on my right side. That's obviously not a great situation. You don't want a DJ. system when you have master and the channel both turned on you can do the mono split still have your cue in your left side and your master in the right side put the volume in the middle See this way, it's almost like the um, it's 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 like the monitor is always on your right side because it's in your ear. You don't even need a booth monitor. You can mix it in your headphones all the time. And is that better? In a lot of clubs, actually, it is because unless you have a booth monitor right beside you, that's very clean sounding. So you, so there's not a lot of latency as the signal gets from the monitor to your ear. You're gonna be able to time things a little bit better if you use just headphones. And uh, also, if you're in a club with a really loud booming sound system, it might be so loud out on the dance floor and with the subs and everything, that in order to, for you to get a good sound quality coming out of your monitor right there in your ear, you have to turn it up fairly loud. And so turning it up fairly loud is not good because it's hard on your ears. Hopefully you're using hearing protectors anyway, but still, it seems kind of pointless to be cranking something up even louder just so that you can attenuate it with a hearing protector. So the advantage by monitoring, mixing totally in your headphones, is that if you've got these noise canceling headphones that block some of the outside sound, then you can do your mixing at a lot lower level inside your headphones without having to worry so much about the outside noise from the dance floor bleeding in. Okay, um, obviously, this has been extremely complicated and I kind of fear that some of you will be even more confused after having watched this uh, than before. But the good thing is, for many of you, um, you're probably watching because you just bought a Pioneer or an Allen & Heath mixer and you're just trying to figure out how the queuing works on your own mixer. So you can completely ignore half the video about the other brand. And the only people that might want to really try and understand the differences are going to be the ones that are playing on different sound systems in different clubs. So, anyway, uh, it, it's, it is very confusing. You know, even for me, I have to think about what I'm doing here fairly often. So, good luck with this, and hopefully this has enlightened you a little bit. And if you're using other types of mixers, like, you know, Rain or some of the lower end ones like Vestax, Behringer, whatever, um, hopefully, at least having seen how it works on two brands, you can figure out how it works on your own brand fairly easily. All right, so thanks for watching. And if you found this to be useful, hopefully, um, I'll, I'll put a link up here in just a second to a page on my own website where you can see a list of all the other DJ related videos that I've done in the past. And uh, hopefully you'll find some other ones there that you'll find interesting. And if you like any of them, please share them on some social media, on Twitter, Facebook, whatever. Anyway, good luck with your DJ. Thank you for watching.